Hey guys and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware and today we're doing something a little bit fun. We're gonna be ranking by tiers all these lovely Ryzen CPUs. And actually more than just these Ryzen CPUs. Now as we get into this, I do want to point out, I have the link for this tier list maker down in the description down below. So if you want to actually take these exact same CPUs that I'm ranking and put them in your own order and then tweet me the, uh, the image of your rankings, then go ahead and do so. And by the way, you can follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And while you're down there, hit that sub button as well. But with that, let's hop over and start ranking some of these Ryzen CPUs. And the criteria that we're using there is really no criteria. So here we are at tiermaker.com and I already have everything set up. Now, it is worth noting, I am not going to go through every single Ryzen CPU released and that's partially because some of these CPUs the AMD has uh, released were OEM only or just very sort of niche products. I'm also not looking at Athlon APUs or anything like that. There are a couple of APUs in here as we go along as well. I also have over off your screen, I have pulled up the, uh, the actual release dates and prices so I can actually sort of put it back into the reference point of when this thing actually uh, or when any of these given CPUs actually released. So as we jump into this in no particular order, I'm gonna start with the Ryzen 1200 and it launched at $109 USD because of when this launched with Intel stuck on four cores and four threads as well. I think that's gonna bolster that to a B. Now I would otherwise put the 1200 down here in the C range, if not the D range. It's just that when the 1200 launched, Intel still had i5s that were four cores and four threads. So for its time, the pricing was fantastic for four cores and four threads. Uh, now jumping over to another first gen Zen part, I'm on put the 1800X down here at the, ooh, C or D, C or D, C or D. You know what, I'm gonna give it C range. And here's why, and this is sort of, a take that maybe you agree with or don't agree with. In isolation, had the 1800X been the only eight core and 16 thread part from AMD for the original Zen architecture, I think it would have been S tier or at least A tier. Maybe the pricing puts it at A tier, not S tier. But because the 1700 existed, it made the 1800X kind of meh. And speaking of the 1700, I'm gonna put the 1700 at the A tier. And I'm only putting it at the A tier and not the S tier just because Zen was significantly behind Intel still on IPC. So uh, most games, for instance, were not taking advantage of tons of cores and threads at the time. So that's why even though $329, eight cores and 16 threads at the time was fantastic, if you could take advantage of lots of cores and lots of threads, if you were just gaming, then it wasn't the greatest chip out there. Um, let's jump forward in time because I'm tired of dealing with some of these first gen parts. I'll swing back to them here in a little bit. Let's jump down to some of these. Actually, you know what? Let's deal with these APUs, these, these Zen based APUs, the 22 and 2400G. The 2200G came out at $100 even, and that was about not quite a year after uh the 1200 which came out in july 2017 the 2200 g came out in february 2018 and at a hundred dollars you know what i'm gonna keep that on the b tier and oh man that's close to a tier to me now the reason for that is uh i'm gonna give this a solid b plus but still b and the reason is it's still four cores and four threads but you're still on the zen architecture but now you have integrated graphics that actually allow you to play most of your popular esports games like Fortnite, Overwatch, all those were very, very playable on the 2200G. So B tier there. Uh, let's deal with the 2400G. I'm gonna leave it on the B tier as well. And that's again, because the $170 pricing was not bad, especially considering we were coming off of um, a pretty big cryptocurrency craze at the time. So the 2400G actually made a lot of sense to a lot of people. Um, it, it still couldn't play, you know, the top end games overly well, but with four cores and eight threads, it could play your esports games very well. Let's drop down to some of the Ryzen 3000 based chips because again, no particular order. Actually, I lied, I'm gonna go with the 2000 based chips here. All right, so 
The 2700 launched at $300 USD and it gave a modest improvement to the Ryzen 1700 uh, with a very modest price cut from MSRP as well. Though keep in mind, the 1700 by that point cost less than MSRP as AMD had been cutting its price as well. So I'm gonna actually put the 2700 here in the C range, not so much because it was a terrible chip, it's just the price wasn't overly compelling by that point compared to the 1700. It didn't really offer a ton of performance benefits compared to a 1700. So uh, the recommendation at the time for me was that if you could find a 1700 for, you know, 30, 40, 50 dollars cheaper than the 2700. The 1700 was still the way to go. That's why I'm sticking the 2700 there down at the C range. The 2700X then becomes a simple D chip. It's it's pricing. It was it was an extra 30 dollars for virtually no performance whatsoever. And the novelty of first gen was gone, where we actually had AMD being competitive again. And people at this point were very wise to the fact that. You really didn't get much extra at all for the 2700X than the 2700. So the 2700 was the move to make on that front. Um, I wanna bounce over here now to the, let's see what would be up next. Looks like some of our Zen Plus based APUs here, the 32 and 3400G. And with these, again, same sort of idea, you're seeing very, very modest uh, performance gains. So I'm going to drop them down to, ooh, C. Yeah, you know what? They're both C chips because the pricing is still good, even for a uh, four core and four thread chip. You know, you still have a $100 MSRP for the 3200G, and the MSRP for the 3400G was 150 when it launched. So y you still have solid pricing there, and you're getting cores and threads. Uh, day to day, still great chips. And uh, even in some gaming, they're still solid. Um, you know what? I'm going to bounce back up and handle some of these other chips because we're going to get to some very, very excellent chips quite quickly. So the 1400, this was four cores, eight threads. This matched up core and thread count to core and thread count to the i7s the Intel was offering at the time for a big price reduction. These came in at $170 USD. And same sort of thing as the 1800X in isolation. They would have been an A or an S tier chip. However, because of the existence of an S tier chip, that would be the Ryzen 1600. The 1400 stays down there at the B range. The 1600 is legendary. As far as price to performance people go, this was six cores, 12 threads. It was $220 when it launched. It pretty quickly fell down to about $200. Uh, pricing, you could find it sort of all day long in that pricing range. And holy cow, this chip is still a relevant chip even today. If you had gotten the original uh, 1600 when it first launched in 2017, some now just shy of four years ago, April 2017, you would probably still be happy with this chip unless you're trying to run something like a 3090, 3080, or a higher end card like that, maybe a higher end NVIDIA 2000 series card, something like that. But for the most part, you're still getting excellent frames in pretty much anything from the 1600. Yeah, obviously, it's still not going to allow a GPU to run up with something like now a 5600X. But the 1600 was fantastic, and it's also worth noting, I'm leaving the 1600 AF off of this list altogether. However, if you were somebody that found the AF, the 1600 AF, at its $85 pricing on Amazon back when it was actually available at $85, that was also an S tier chip at that price. Because that pricing, even though it was very brief that it was available at that price, that was incredible price to performance to the point where it virtually killed any uh, idea of using the used market for CPUs. So the 1600 is a legend as far as CPUs. It's, it's just a shame it was never adopted more because the first gen Ryzen uh, didn't really see the wide adoption as people sort of played the wait and see game. But the people that did pick up the 1600, I feel that most of them were probably extremely happy. Now, that's a good segue here into the 2600 discussion, which uh, let me check my pricing on it. The 2600 came in at $200 USD right at a year later. So uh, 
man. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it an A tier. Uh, and, and until the 1600 AF came into being, uh, which was well over a year later, the 2600 was still a very good value, especially as the 1600 uh, went out of stock at different places. Though it was always one of those things. Same thing with the 2700, 1700. If you could find the 1600 at significantly cheaper pricing, Go with the 1600 was the recommendation. Now we're going to get to the 3000 series. I said I wasn't going in any particular order, but it looks like I'm just going to kind of go down the generations at this point. So the 3100, four cores, eight threads, $100. And you know what? For somebody that was um, just looking for a CPU that could do some gaming, but for the most part was more interested in day-to-day -day computing, I think the 3100 was a really good value. It came with a stock cooler that was good enough to keep it cool enough to not throttle uh, ridiculously at least, and it could definitely handle gaming. So yeah, I think the 3100 is a B tier chip. You could probably get away with a lesser chip if you were looking for just day-to-day -day gaming, but four cores and eight threads gave you some gaming options if you were uh, doing anything beyond just daily compute work and actually looking at gaming. The 3300X, uh, let's see, $120. To me, that's a C-tier chip, and, and here's why. The 3300X was in stock and existing alongside the 1600 AF, which made it a really tough sell. Uh, and for that matter, it made the 3100 a very tough sell as well. But at $120, you were in this sort of middle ground point where if you were trying to save money, you should probably drop down about $35 to the 1600 AF, pick that thing up. Or if you were looking for true gaming chops, maybe jump up a little bit in price and jump for something like a 3600 and get a little bit more power out of it, or at least a little bit more in the way of cores and threads. Though there were a lot of cases there where the 3300X did actually outperform in some titles that were more uh, single thread dependent than the 3600. But to me, the 3300X just always existed in this weird niche that I don't know made it really all that popular. I could be wrong. Maybe you love the 3300X. Let me know. Comments down below. Moving on to the 3600, though. Pricing at 200 and... Uh, no, just 200. So, yeah, that makes it an A-tier chip. It was a significant uplift from the 2600. It was, it was solid. It was, it, was a, it was a very good upgrade if you had come from the 2600. So, yeah, that's an A-tier chip. The 3700X. That came in at $330. Ah, uh, that's a B or a C tier to me. You know what? I'm going to give it B tier. And, and the reason I'm struggling is if you're really going for lots of cores and threads, the 3900X did exist. And it, yeah, was a, a, a chunk more expensive. But at the same time, you could save a lot of money by dropping down to the 3600. That's why it's hard for me to say that the 3700X was anything more than, I'm going to call that a B minus. The 3900X... That is an A tier chip, and it's probably selfish. It's an A tier chip to me because of the idea of 12 cores and 24 threads at $500. It's, it's getting into encroaching on enthusiast territory at a price that is still somewhat mainstream. I wouldn't call it overly mainstream. Now, the 3950X... I'm going to call that a B tier chip, and that's because you're, again, getting massive amounts of cores and threads. And by the way, the 3950X is still what I run as my main CPU and my main rig. The reason it's on an A or an S tier is you're losing price to performance as you go up that stack. The 3950X gives you a ton of cores and threads, the most available at the time with the best multi-threaded performance on any mainstream platform. However, your price to performance was tanking as a result of, I believe it was $750, You, yeah, original pricing. So that brings us on to the 5000 series. And we're going to start with the 5600X. At $300, this is a B tier chip. I want to put it in A tier because of the IPC uplift with the 5000 series is fantastic. The reason it's B tier is that $300 pricing is not all that great. In fact, it's a little discouraging that we don't have anything that is below $300 pricing with the Zen 3 architecture there. But it, if you're looking for the cheapest but also still getting almost the best gaming performance, then the 5600X is the way to go. Six cores, 12 threads, you get almost... 
uh, the best gaming performance in the industry right now, and you get it at $300, which is less than what Intel is offering and less than uh, AMD's actual champion CPUs, but you're getting yourself like, I don't know, in a lot of titles, almost the full 100% of the way there with gaming performance, and in most titles, you're talking about giving up a couple few percentage points with the 5600X, so it's a fantastic CPU. The 5800X is a C tier chip. It's uh, almost 500, actually I'm gonna call it a D tier chip. Yeah, it's a D tier, and the reason for it is when we get into the world where the 5900X is available at MSRP, the 5800X makes almost no sense because the difference in pricing between the 5800X and the 5900X is $100. Before that $100, you get 50% more cores, 50% more threads, and you can also then, if you're at the 5800X and you're thinking, maybe I don't need all the cores and threads, you can easily drop down to a 5600X and save yourself a lot of money. So the 5800X, it's just, it's pricing is probably a little bit out of sorts. And the 5950X, I call that a it's a b plus to me and it's a b plus because the 3950x sort of broke the ground with the uh 16 cores 32 threads on a mainstream platform but the pricing again at 800 dollars is the, the price of performance is not great most people that can truly take advantage of the cores and threads i'm gonna guess they're not taking such advantage that the 5900X couldn't uh, be a perfectly good CPU for them. Now, in industries where time literally is money and even small chunks of time add up over a longer period of time, then the 5950X at $800 would still make a ton of sense for those people to pay the uh, price premium to get more cores and more threads. But for most people that are maybe looking at some home creative work, then the 5900X might actually be the better choice. But if you're an enthusiast, the 5950X isn't priced to the point where it's ridiculous. So there we are, that's the tiers. And as I didn't actually run through these before, these are just sort of my uh, my gut reactions. And here's what I like. I have a bell curve here where the B is, you know, sort of the average what AMD was putting out. And I do have one S tier, one A++ CPU out there, the Ryzen 5. 1600, which I guess then means that that is my personal favorite Ryzen chip of all time when you're considering the time period it came out and the pricing when it launched and just the revolutionary nature of that price paired with that many cores and that many threads. The Ryzen 5 1600, for my money, is the greatest Ryzen CPU ever launched. So hopefully that was a nice change of pace. And if it was, give this video a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.